look great. A warm greeting is extended to all of, all of our families gathering today to support their children as they present themselves for the reception of Holy Eucharist for the first time. Star of the Sea Church is so pleased that this long-awaited event is finally able to take place. As with other areas of society, safety protocols to fight the spread of the coronavirus have been put into place here in our parish. In addition to wearing of a face mask and hand sanitizing, all are asked to avoid any unnecessary movement in the church during this liturgy. This means that any photographs are, are to be taken from your seat and that your face mask not be removed until just prior to receiving Holy Communion. It is recommended that the face coverings be removed when you are right behind the person receiving the Eucharist as you stand in the communion line. A space of six feet is to be observed between each communicant. The children are asked to remove their face masks at the same time as their robe is called forward to receive communion. Please note that in addition to this mass being professionally recorded to be uploaded to YouTube for the benefit of family and friends who could not be with us today, the children will be called out by a row at the end of the mass, at which time they will face the congregation and be presented with an envelope containing their certificate and some gifts from the parish. All are asked to exit the church following Mass in an orderly manner by the same door you used to enter. A collection basket has been positioned in that entrance to receive donation envelopes and loose offerings as a weekly collection is not being taken while, while the pandemic persists. Thank you and welcome. Please stand for the entrance antiphon. that seek the Lord rejoice, turn to the Lord and his strength, constantly seek his face. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Dear friends in Christ, let us take a moment to humbly acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth to the people. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let's please be seated as our first scripture reading is proclaimed. A reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, You shall not wrong or oppress a resident alien, for you were aliens in the land of Egypt. You shall not abuse any widow or orphan. If you do abuse them, when they cry out to me, I will surely heed their cry. My wrath will burn and I will kill you with the sword. And your wives shall become widows and your children or orphans. If you lend money to my people, to the poor one among you, you shall not deal with them as a creditor. You shall not exact interest from them. If you take your neighbor's cloak and pawn, you shall restore it to that person before the sun goes down, for it may be their only clothing to use as cover. In what else shall that person sleep? And if that person cries out to me, I will listen, for I am compassionate. The word of the Lord. Thank you.
heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. I invite all to be seated, please, for just a few moments as we reflect upon not only the theme at hand, but a little bit our scripture passages. Now, for those, for those, when you entered and heard the readings, who were thinking, hmm, some of these readings, that's a bit odd. The first reading sounded at times a little on the harsh side, for example. I wonder why they didn't choose different readings for the First Communion. If you were wondering that, here's the reason. This is a Sunday Mass, and so these readings are being read all over the world. Um, and so Sunday Mass has to be that, the readings for the Sunday Mass. So what we do is we incorporate such events as First Communion, or it could be Confirmation, uh, in the, or Baptism into the Sunday, Sunday Eucharist. But as always, the readings never speak powerfully to us. Last week we had the beautiful parable of, um, from, from Jesus speaking about those that were invited to the wedding banquet, those who did not answer and um, others who, who, oh, excuse me, gee, the weeks go by so fast. Sorry, it was um, the taxes, uh, Caesar and the, um, and God, who gets what? And so we were able to say to everyone present, well, God, of course, is number one. God is without beginning or end. He is the, he is the creator. And so his rights have to be observed. Some people don't think about that. His rights have to be observed. One of his rights is well, to be acknowledged as the creator as God, as the Eternal One, and to be worshipped as such. There's a lot of people denying God that right, especially in our modern era. It's a right, actually. Imagine if our rights were denied. Well, right away I would make my way to court, as would you, and I'd say, well, God could do the same. And uh, so, so we, we hear that, uh, now this week, um, how Jesus gives to us as he's tested by this lawyer, he gives to us, them and us, I, I, he distills things. He makes it very simple and basic because Jesus knew, he knows obviously, he knew the human condition very well. He knows that we are, we don't, complexities don't work well for us. That's why when people want to get their own way, they will become, they'll give arguments that tend to be more and more complex that you have trouble opposing. Rather, it doesn't have to be that way. It, sometimes it really is very simple. And in this case, it's, it's eternally simple. I uh, never mind getting caught up with all of the 600 or more laws that there were in Jesus' day. Wait, those laws are there and they're on the books, but guess what? Behind them all are two basic laws. The first is this, love God with all one's mind, heart, soul, and strength. And the second is like it, to love one's neighbor as oneself. Um, St. John tells us clearly, if you cannot or do not love the neighbor that you see, then you, you're not loving the God that you cannot see. So, um, you know, everybody, I tell the children as they come forward for confession, I say, listen, you're, you're learning because it's not unusual. It's not these children. I'm not giving away any confessions. We all, we all know. We all know children, of course, and one big thing is, um, at times, disobedience toward parents. I'm not doing as they ask, etc. Teachers, legitimate authorities. And I always explain to them that, wait, you've got to understand that we're to, we're to learn in this lifetime to love God, and that means to do as He asks. 
That's how, that's, how else would we show our love? How else? There's, not, there's nothing you can give God, actually, that he doesn't already have, except your heart, your loyalty, your allegiance. And so our parents stand as the visible representatives, representatives that can be seen and touched for God. They, they stand in that place right now. And so um, God could, could very well say to, the, to you as a child, if you say, well, I'll obey you, Lord, I'll do anything you want, but I'm not, I can't, I'm not crazy about obeying my parents every time. It's not always convenient. Sometimes it gets in my way. I'm busy or you're on a tablet or a telephone, a phone, or I'm doing this or I'm doing that. I say, they say, come here. No, no, wait a minute. And then it turns out to be half an hour or never at all. Well, if you say to God, I'll obey you, and uh, he can, he'll quickly say to you, actually isn't true. Well, well how are you, why are you saying that, Lord? Because if you won't obey the ones that I put in charge of you, that you can see and touch and they're right there, how will you obey me whom you cannot see? Okay? So this is why these two laws of love, this is why they're so closely connected. We look, we, we're loving God in our neighbor, but of course we're offering love and worship to God separately. As well some people forget that they think oh it's only about the neighbor well if it's only about the neighbor then guess what it won't be only about the neighbor for long if we forget that God is God and that God has expectations he's a personal God who loves us deeply part of his explanation see how he had to get a little bit he had to get a little tough with the people in the first reading did you hear that he said listen if you deprive a person, a poor person, of their sleeping garment, if they have nothing to sleep in and they're cold at night, and they, if they call out to me, I'll hear them. Oh, maybe somebody, did somebody, did somebody go in there? Oh, maybe he's not, yeah, there's water in there, and maybe there's not water in there, okay. So no, I saw them all looking that way. I still, even though I'm past 50, I still have a peripheral vision, actually, okay, so. But there you go. So, um, to love, so we're called then to love, love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and body, and the neighbor as oneself. If we don't see that as loving God first, for those who say, no, I'm just good to other people, you won't be good to other people throughout your entire life, I don't, um, that's been proven. Yeah, as soon as God gets forgotten, what will happen is, uh, it's, some people are easy to be good to, others aren't. We all know the difficult people, people who are difficult to love, people who are difficult to work with, people who are, they're there for a reason, they're there to teach us to love. And uh, if we don't know that, and we don't see God as the ultimate author, the one who loves everyone dearly and deeply, then we're not going to continue to love our neighbor. And as I say, he's such a personal God. So did you hear what he said? If this person that you have deprived of something necessary, if you've deprived them of that, they will call out to me and I will hear them. I will hear them and I will answer that prayer. And, uh, and as I see, God, he used some fairly firm language. That's our God. But sometimes that's your parents have to get firm sometimes. But not because they stop loving you, but rather because they love you very much. You know, ever been, you know, you're about to do something harmful and then, no, stop! Don't you ever do that again. Who has had that experience? Probably, oh, you say, well, no, never mind looking at one another. Why do you look at him? I'm asking you. <laughs> Who has had this experience? Yes, of course, because, right, because that means that shows the love. Now, how will we see God's love poured out in a, in a unique way as Catholic Christians, as believers? In the Eucharist. What more could a person do than to give you their life? And in case you miss that, miss that rule or that, that um, fact, Jesus says, I tell you, you cannot have greater love than a person, another person, than that you would lay down your life for them, that you would give your life, or that you would offer to die for them. There isn't anything more that can be given. And so the Lord Jesus, in the human life, that as second person of the Trinity, so he's God, well, God cannot die. But one with a human nature and a human body can. So Jesus took that on, 
and he suffered, he uh, was put on the cross, suffered, died, was buried, and then rose again. Well, he's about to feed us with himself, his risen self from heaven. And so you're feeling excited now, and good things come to those who wait. You've had to wait many months for this, many more months. You're excited, but I tell you, you're not as excited as a few others are. Who else could Father Richard mean? All of the angels and saints in heaven are rejoicing at this precise moment. Why? Because, oh yeah, they can just feel the love in your heart, and they're just, they love God so much that they're just so pleased that others, God doesn't have a lot of friends, unfortunately. He does not. It sounds odd to say, he does not have a lot of friends, uh, even though he's so good to us. And so there is the angels and saints saying, Oh, Lord, we worship you night and day. And now look, others who are so excited to receive you into themselves and into their lives. And so everybody, I don't want to hold you up because I know that people want to move on with the First the Holy Communion. Um, I, I don't have to go through it again because um, you did this, you had an opportunity to do this in class. Last week, St. Anne's did not have that opportunity, so I did it again. Does anybody need a quick review or are you fine? Anybody need a quick review? The steps are simple, right? Okay, I know. And don't panic because I believe Mrs. Marion, our teacher, is probably going to be to my left and just assisting further, okay? You, uh, well, we'll, we'll do that in about um, 15 minutes. How does that sound? Would everybody like now to stand and let's profess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. To love God with all one's mind, soul, and strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself, are the two great laws behind everything in the Law and the Prophets. We now pray that the virtue of love be strengthened in each one of us. For the Church, the body of Christ, working to evangelize all nations, teaching them to observe the commandments of God, we pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer, that all Catholics will exercise their civic duties conscientiously, demonstrating their love for the invisible God by loving the neighbor they can see. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our children receiving their first Holy Communion this weekend, as they always treasure this sacred gift as its devout reception transformed them into stronger disciples of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary and her rosary during this month of Our Lady and beyond, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater for, for strong support for this year's Development and Peace Campaign and its efforts to bring aid to those in the developing world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all who are sick, preparing for their recovering or recovering from surgery, that healing may be theirs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that all who have died may rest eternally in the peace of Christ, freed from the cares of this life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our loving Father, it is through love that we were created 
and to love that we shall return when at last you call us from this life. Grant us every grace to prepare for this great homecoming so that we may live with you in peace and security now and for ages unending. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, if the children would like to silently be seated, please, the altar will be set up. Uh, most of the children. <laughs> okay, and, uh, and everybody. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Taught them to look forward to salvation. 
And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of his one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, Gerard, our Bishop, the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those here present before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, his spouse, with your apostles, Saint Teresa of Calcutta, and all the saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow upon the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Now, of course, we leave, we'll leave the kneelers in the lowered position. We will ask all to stand, please. And so we don't. And
shall we pray together now confidently as the Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power of the Lord are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. We'll invite all to kneel, please, once again. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, grant thou worthy that you should enter after my room. But only see the Lord and our blessings.
May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just before the final blessing, I would like to thank all who helped to put this liturgy together and for the pre um, preparation over the past many months, obviously, our teachers. And you'll notice that um, um, Miss Smith Bonnet is also present from us from last year. Uh, anybody else from last year? Uh, just in case, because I'm always missing something. And um, this is pillar very much for her uh, assistance over the, with the instruction that you had. I think it was uh, back in February or something. Or was it hers? To be? Yeah. So very good. And uh, everybody, Mrs. Shakespeare, thank you so much, Mr. Tracy, the music. And um, beautiful, everyone. What a reverent celebration prayer. It was so prayerful. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remain in the peace of Christ. Mass is ended. Thanks I be to God. God. Now, of course, recall that the gentlemen momentarily will be receiving their certificates and they'll be turning this way so you'll be able to see them. And, and perhaps, um, if you'd like to be seated to make sure that everybody can see, please, or if you'd like to stand up, to stand up, maybe just off to the side. Okay, excellent. Thank you. And I'll stand over here while the certificates are being presented.
time. Yes, I know you've been waiting. We want to show, we'll certainly show our support, our love, and our appreciation of each of the children. In just one moment, I just want to remind you, please, that uh, the um, First Communion record recording that Mr. Eckstein, Ron Eckstein, is doing in the law, and this will be available within within uh, a few days, okay? So just log on, a star of the Sea Church, St. Catharines, and, and you will see it, okay? And so, shall we join it together? And